it was a scary moment for me because I see Matt do all this work. He got the ball out there. Now, now all I got to do. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. I am Ben Newman, and you know every single week we love having the opportunity to come to you guys with stories of individuals' burn, their fire, their passion. And for me, this is a super special episode because we're going to spend time with two guys, Matt Hawk and Jason Sanders from the Miami Dolphins. And these are two guys that I've had the opportunity to work with now for years. So from Matt's first year in the league, now heading into his fourth, Jason's first year in the league now heading into his third. And, uh, man, we've had a lot of fun, a lot of great conversations. I've seen, I've seen and been at some fun games that you guys get to uh, compete in. I mean, you talk about the play against uh, the, the Patriots a couple of years ago to end that game and just some of the, the, the energy and emotion, seeing the looks on your guys' faces. It, uh, it, it's been really special. I know there's some great things ahead uh, this season as well. Now, before I turn it over to these guys, I know you guys don't want to hear much from me. I just want to set the table on something that I don't know if a lot of people think about when it comes to special teams in the NFL. And I think, Jason, you can probably remember back to being in college at New Mexico and Matt, you at Arizona State. You know, you may have a handful of punters on the roster. There might be a handful of kickers. Then you got freshmen that they bring in. and There's a bunch of guys. And what people don't realize is that when you're playing the numbers game of an NFL roster, 53 guys, 10 people that are on the practice squad, there's one punter, there's one kicker, and there's one special teams player. So I hope you guys realize, like, when you, when you turn on an NFL football game, you may see there's tons of linebackers, there's tons of linemen. Like, guys, I want you to really pay attention to and, and think about when you hear Matt and Jason talk about how they go about their work and what fuels them in the burn, it's pretty darn rare to do what you guys do. It, it's Matt, you are one of 32 punters in the NFL, and Jason, you are one of 32 place kickers. So I think that's really, really unique, and I don't know how often people think about that. And before I, I turn it over to you guys uh, to, to just address that and maybe the, the burn that lies inside of you, uh, to, to get you to compete and to silence the noise. Cause that's, I mean, the operating knowing that it's you against you for the team when there's only 32, we want to talk about that mindset, but I also want to thank you guys. I can't tell you how many people, and I really haven't told many of the story, this pair of shoes right behind me above that, uh, above that football and helmet ab uh, below that Jerry Rice Jersey. Uh, that is one of each of your shoes. So, the other shoes, the other foot is actually in uh, Isaac's bedroom, so those hang uh, in, in his room. But uh, for me in the office, you guys uh, each sent me a pair of your cleats and you signed them. And uh, I, I'm not going to read what's on those cleats, but I just want to let you guys know that, uh, you know, our friendship, you know, that's why I do what we do. Yes, it's fun to go win some football games, but getting to hang with you guys and, and getting to be in your corner – uh, that's why I love doing what I do, and I appreciate you guys. And uh, it's awesome that the three of us in this virtual world can do a burn episode together. So, Matt, being the, the elder statesman of the group, you get to go first. Tell us kind of, for you, that, that burn to play football and to compete and knowing that you're one of 32. You know, why do you play the game of football, and what's that burn for you? Well, first, uh, thanks for having us. Um, but, you know, it's just – Growing up, I mean, I played all sports. I played basketball, football, baseball. I mean, you grow up competing and be fortunate enough to make it to college. I mean, that, that competitive driving, you just rises every, every year and stuff like that. And being able to, when I got a chance to go to a camp in the NFL, like I wasn't drafted or nothing. I, had to, I uh, was in competition with the guy that was there and I mean, after talking to like my kicking coach and everything, like you're competing for th this guy's job. Like it's his job. I mean, that's how he feeds his family. And like, that's as crazy as that is, that's the reality of the NFL. And I mean, if you're not competitive, you're not going to last because every single day um, teams are looking to put the best roster out there. I mean, if, if you don't have what it takes or if you, if your level of uh, play drops, I mean, they're going to find somebody else on the street and, replace you i mean it's you have you have to be motivated um 
within yourself and you have you have to be willing to get better every single day i mean you take the bad days and learn from them and um take the good days with a grain of salt and try to stack them how about for you jason well i think being <clears throat> one of 32 is what makes being in the nfl that much more special i mean when you graduate college you you get thrown into a pool of you know so many kickers and it's how how do you set yourself apart from from those kickers to to place you as one of the 32 you know what i'm saying but i think it, it starts for me when when i wake up i i don't have that personality where i can just lay in bed all day once i wake up once my eyes open it's seven it's eight o'clock i'm gonna go do something i'm gonna do something productive and i'm gonna and I'm going to do whatever I can to make myself better that day. And I think that's what, that's what's helped me along, along this NFL career these past couple of years is that I've always wanted to get better. I never got complacent and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get used to sleeping in bed all day and not, not getting up and getting working. And I, I think for you guys, one of the things that you mentioned kind of being in this situation where you're away from your facilities, you're everybody's in different cities, there's uncertainty as to when you're coming back. I mean, you both address just in us, you know, kind of catching up that, you know, the discipline of still having to go find a place to kick, having to make sure that you're doing your weight training, staying on top of your nutrition. And, you know, for you guys to do what you do, it, it's almost, it's very similar to a golfer. You know, like a linebacker, a linebacker could miss his assignment, but still make a hell of a tackle. Whereas for you guys, I don't think people realize how long it takes the discipline, the mechanics for you guys to put a good swing on a football. And so, Matt, if you could just kind of address, even though being away, maybe some of the things that have worked for you and how important discipline has been for you. So having that drive, but then the discipline to do what you do because it, it is very much like a golfer i mean it, you got to get really good solid swings on that football yeah i mean kind of like jason just said i mean during this this time like if i wake up and i just sit around all day like i feel awful like it's it's just like you feel like you're missing something so being able to wake up and just start a workout and go about your business i mean it's that's what i think that's what also sets apart being one of 32, you know, be like having the mental drive and the physical drive to go do that on your own. Like coaches aren't telling me or giving me a workout to go do like, you gotta, you gotta do it yourself. And so I think just, I mean, it, it's that, I think that also sets apart from a lot of people, you know, and then kicking wise, I mean, I mean, punting, there's a lot of guys out there that can go punt a football. I mean, it it's, and it's like golf, if you stop playing for a while, when you come back to it, like you're going to have to refine it. You're, you're going to have to bring back that muscle memory and stuff like that. So punting and kicking, it's all about repeatability. Like if you can repeat the same motion over and over again and hit good kicks and good punts while people are running at you, while teams are trying to block your kicks and stuff like that in pressure situations, um, that's what sets you apart. I'd agree with that too. I think, uh, to add to that, there's I think there's about a hundred guys out there that are good enough to kick in the NFL. I think they have the ability to kick and punt, but when they get the chance, I think I think they're just not in the right headspace. And so, you know, I think a lot of people lose the battle before it even starts. I think um, I think it just starts with confidence. Yeah, if you if you believe that you're gonna hit these 55, 60 yard punts, and I believe I'm gonna hit these. I'm gonna make this kick, you know, I'll make this next kick. I think that's that's where we win the battle before it even starts. That brings up a, a great point, controlling the mind, which you guys both do. And I wanna add something onto that, which I see watching watching you guys play, whether it's on TV every Sunday or, or when I'm down in Miami with you guys. But I see you guys having fun. And, and it, it makes me think about Matt, you, you shared with me uh, part of your Hall of Fame speech, and I know you're both humble guys, so me even saying Hall of Fame speech, you're probably pissed at me that I even said that because I know neither of you are big on accolades and things like that. 
But I remember reading, you know, that speech that you shared with me and you talking about actually making fourth down something that fans, they don't have a problem watching it, making fourth down fun again and flipping that mindset. And, you know, because there's a lot of fans that are like, oh, we don't want to see the kicker. We don't want to see the putter out here. But I think you guys bring a passion to special teams, which is converted to big, big results on the field. So maybe maybe talk about uh, Matt, and then we'll flip it to you, Jason. Like, how is it important for you guys to, to have fun on a down when most people would prefer that the quarterback was still spinning it or the running back was still pounding the ground? I mean, that's our job. I mean, we're, we are only on the field on fourth down or an extra point or like a kickoff. But when we're scoring points or flipping field position, it's fourth down. So, I mean, I had even to go back to that, I had, I had struggled with that in college because I went from in high school playing receiver and stuff to going just to play punter. So I actually had to create that mindset about like fourth down is my job. Like that's what I'm here for. So, and if you're not having fun, I mean, it's, you're going to lose your confidence. You're going to, you're going to lose your ability to do what you do. I think, I mean, if you're not having fun, then you're not going to be successful. I think, I think um, it's all related. If you're, if you're having fun, that means you're confident. And if you're confident, that means you're doing your job. And I think that's what makes your job overall more fun, right? I mean, I mean, if you're having fun, it, it takes out the whole risk of each kick to me. If I'm thinking about, you know, is this the kick that I'm going to be out of here? Uh, I don't know. Let's find out, right? I mean, that, that's the different mentality of, of you know, having fun and, and and just letting it loose. I think to play in the NFL, like even other positions, I mean, you got to love what you're doing. I mean, otherwise it's not going to last. Well, speaking of uh, having fun and making plays, uh, you, you know, I got to ask you guys about this. So let's go back to week 12. You guys are playing the Philadelphia Eagles. The score is 13 to seven. And all of a sudden, everybody's expecting Jason to put a nice swing on the thing, a nice, uh, nice short field goal, which, which you know, you're watching, you're like, Jason would nail this. And all of a sudden, you see that this, this uh, wacky formation. We had practiced that play for, what, like five weeks, six weeks or something like that. I mean, it had been something that we had practiced over and over again, added wrinkles, added multi-direction, stuff like that. And... It's actually funny if you go back and watch the very first time we did it in practice, it was awful. Like it was almost it was almost so bad that they probably would have been like, all right, we're never doing this. But it was it was kind of funny because I think as we kept practicing it, and guys in the locker room would kind of be like, There's no way this is gonna work. Like Jason's gonna be covered. They're gonna have a man on you. Like it was kind of a thing where we were just like, All right, well, if we if we call it then We'll see, but I mean, when they, when they actually call it on the field, then you got to get make sure the Eagles had the look that you're looking for. Because if they weren't in the right, like the number game or whatever, if they weren't lined up properly, then we were going to probably take a timeout and kick the field goal. So I mean, everything kind of had to align, and then I'm just executing really. Yeah, I think it's such a unique play. I mean, it was a scary moment for me because I see Matt do all this work. He got the ball out there. Now, now all I got to do is catch the ball. I didn't want to ruin that for Matt. Yeah, <laughs> but it's definitely, it's definitely a unique play, and, and it's something we'll have forever. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you talk about uh, that play and knowing that Matt, you went into your high school Hall of Fame not for punting, but for being a uh, record-setting wide receiver. You should have been the one catching that football, not the touchdown pass to Jason, right? Yeah, we actually joked about that too. Like when we first started, who was going to do what? And um, I don't know how Crossman, our coach, came up with who was doing what, but I mean, that's how they were comfortable doing it. And I mean, Jason can catch the ball too. I and mean, we play catch every single day. It's not like he's not an athlete. I mean, he's, he can catch it and throw it. I mean, he, can, he could have done what I did too. So uh, I don't know how, how they came up with who was doing what, but I mean, and it worked, so. And it, it, it was supposed to be a little lob pass, too, and he goes with the flick. And so I'm waiting, <laughs> I'm waiting for that ball to come over the top. And it... <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, they, they, it was actually designed to be like a basketball <laughs> shot. That's why it was, it was called Mountaineer Shot because Dan Kilgore went to that place and stayed in there, the Mountaineers, I think. But the shot was supposed to be because like I was supposed to like almost jump past it. But like those guys coming at me, it was just reaction just to flick it through there. I, we had actually, out of the five weeks, I had never thrown the ball like that. <laughs> it was probably weird for him seeing that like that. I, I've seen them all. I've seen the scythe throws, <laughs> the, the big logs, the, the I got tight trouble. throws. Yeah. I got in trouble for the five <laughs> on <of> practice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably safe to say unless we see that play again coach Flo is not going to have you lining up in shotgun for uh for any game-winning touchdown passes Matt probably not <laughs> <laughs> and Jason for you it uh I'm sure when you got drafted uh you know in, in the seventh round and, and this will air probably about a week or two after the, the, the current draft you know and you see your name go across uh, that ticker and you get that phone call you probably never thought you'd be catching a uh, a touchdown pass, did you? Yeah, not not alone that, but you know, doing a lot of other special things too, like hitting game winners in the NFL, hitting onside kicks in the NFL against the you know the best players in the world. I think all of that is just surreal to me too. Just to think about what you've done to in, in two years. Yeah, and I, you know, what I think makes uh, makes you guys special, as I mentioned it earlier, is the humbleness. You know, you you have kick game winners, and it's just been incredible. I mean, Matt, some of the 60-yard punts, you know, I always joke with you, kick the skin off the thing. And, uh, I mean, some of your punts, it's like I literally look. I'm sure Jason's thinking the same thing. Like, he may literally knock the air out of his football. He just kicked that thing so far. And it's incredible what you guys have accomplished and, I know the best is yet to come. And, you know, seeing some of the special teams players of the week and knowing that you guys, you know, you earn those things together, right? Because the special teams room, it's different, right? A lot of it is you guys have to stay motivated on your own and you guys have to stay locked in, just you and the two of you and the long snapper. And so I just, I commend you for having such a great mindset and staying connected to that drive and that discipline. And one of the awards that we do have to talk about I know there's a unique story to it, the way that it kind of all un unfolds. But for you guys to win the ESPY this year for uh, Clutch Performance of the Year, uh, I thought was absolutely awesome. And uh, just to tease you, Jason, I got to pick one of the two of you. You know, I'm a, I, even though most of the time I'm in sweats, just like you guys, I do like dressing nice. Matt had a fine pair of shoes on. I mean, he had a great <laughs> looking pair. <of> <laughs> I'm a shoe guy, so he had some great shoes. So, you know, the next award you guys win, we got to have a little competition for uh, for that shoe game. But what, what was it like being at the ESPYs for you guys to win that clutch performance play of the year? When did you find out? How did that unfold? And what was that like for you guys? What was that experience like? Um, well, <clears throat> we found out maybe five days before the event. Before that, but... And we, they didn't tell us, like, we won or anything. It was more like, oh, yeah, you're invited to this. Like, go, like, just go show up. Like, you don't got to do anything. Like, make sure you have speech. That's nice. Make sure you got a, a suit or a tux. I'm like, I don't own a tux. Like, I'm, <laughs> stuff like that. And we get there, and it was kind of like, are we, like, or could we actually win this thing? Like, and then we, we get in our seats, and we're in the aisle seats, and we're like, oh, my gosh, like, we actually might win this thing. We're in the aisles, so we're like kind of further back. And we're like, hey, but we're, we're still in row like 30. So like, I don't know. And then when they called it, it was like all the awards that night, like had, it was like three plays up for the award or three players up for it. And they announced one like for ours, it was literally just, they just called us. And we were like, almost kind of like shocked us. I mean, I don't know if you could tell like fire, like we had nothing prepared. We didn't have speech prepared. Yeah. <laughs> It was pretty cool. Yeah, what uh, what what a great experience for you guys, and uh, I know that that's just the beginning of uh, you know the fun awards, but uh, also the incredible things that you guys are going to celebrate. I don't think a lot of people know we're not going to speak speak too much about it, but there's a special thing going on down uh, in Miami. I think there's a lot of belief. There's been a lot of great parts that are now being put in place, and. I just think it's going to be a really special season. Whenever this thing gets going, uh, I just want you guys to know I, I appreciate you guys. I, I am in your corner. I can't wait to be back down in uh, Miami with you guys this year. It uh, be my fourth season, so it's like we came to Miami together, Matt. And then uh, you know it's been awesome, Jason. Uh, 
you know, you now enter in your third season. So I just, I appreciate you guys and can't wait uh, for another season. Matt, any, uh, anything that you want to leave uh, everybody with or Jason, maybe a, you know, a, a great lesson you've learned in your life on disciplines or mindset and then Jason for you. I mean, just always knowing that like, you're in my corner and stuff like that. It, it, it helps me like if I'm ever uh, going through some stuff, but I mean, I think I mean, everyone, I think everybody has, everybody has the, or has the ability to have great discipline and a great mindset. I mean, you, you choose your outcome, you choose how you go about your, what you want to do and your daily life. So, I mean, you, everybody has, I, I think has a choice and it's all about making the most of it. Amen to that. Yeah. I just want to say, appreciate you too, Ben. Um, one of the things you taught me two years ago, it's a quote and it, it stuck with me ever since it's why not give a hundred percent when it's hundred percent your choice. And that quote you gave me is something I, I think about every other day. You know, every time I don't want to do something, it's, or, and sometimes when I'm in a place I don't want to be, it's why not give a hundred percent when it's hundred percent your choice. And even just like the words you give us like relentless and, uh, just attack and legacy and stuff that you send us every day. I mean, it's, it's just a constant reminder to try to be the best. Well, you got, you guys know I'm going to keep it coming and uh, the, the best is yet to come. We're just getting started. So I appreciate you guys and uh, let's keep working, get our, uh, get our butts out of quarantine and get back down to Miami. I, I appreciate you. Thank you.